Hello, my name is Bart Ducro and I've uh, prepared a presentation on inbreeding in the Frisian horse. How should we deal with it? First of all, why is inbreeding uh, relevant to the Frisian population? Well, it is a closed breed and in a closed breed there will always be an increase of the inbreeding. That is unavoidable because the Horses get more and more related to each other and we know that mating of related uh, animals will uh, result in inbreeding in their progeny. Is that a problem? No, it doesn't have to be as long as this inbreeding rate is not too high. So if it is a low inbreeding rate uh, and the advice is to have an inbreeding rate of around half a percent per generation, then the population can recover from this uh, loss of genetic diversity. And this is uh, illustrated here in this uh, figure, where you see that the increase in average inbreeding from generation 1 to generation 2 is half a percent. You also see that I have copied the, the same uh, figure at a higher level, in which I will indicate that the level of inbreeding, the starting level of the inbreeding at generation one, is not important for the uh, risk that inbreeding has for in, uh, genetic disorders. So if it is uh, at uh, an increase from say 1% to 1.5%, or it is an increase from 10% to 10.5%, the uh, consequences is, uh, is the same. So in case of low inbreeding, there is not a problem. If the inbreeding rate is high, say above 1%, yeah, then we have a higher risk of genetic disorders that will occur in the next generation. Well, let's have a look at the pattern of inbreeding rate uh, during the history of the Frisian uh, population. And that is here uh, illustrated in this graph, where you see the difference in inbreeding of, uh, of the foals born in a specific year uh, as a difference with the average inbreeding of their parents. And this is the inbreeding rate which we are uh, uh, interested in. And you see that uh, during the last couple of years, the inbreeding rate is below this limit of 1%. And it, is, it has been in the uh, years also close to this half percent, which is the green horizontal line. So that is, we are in the safe zone, so to say, uh, during the last couple of years. And if you see that we come from a much higher uh, inbreeding rate in, in the past, uh, and these are the inbreeding rate in the, in the red square, there we, uh, we have too high inbreeding rate uh, with the consequences of uh, genetic disorders. And the decrease we have seen in the last uh, two decennia uh, are the result of the successful measures that have been implied in the population, namely the mating quota, only a restricted number of progeny per stallion, and the publishing of the kinship coefficient of these breeding stallions. These have been successful in reducing the inbreeding rate. So, as I told you, we have had a much higher inbreeding rate in the past, and the consequences of the current genetic disorders we are uh, uh, faced with in the, in the current generations are the result of this too high inbreeding in the past. So what is causing this high inbreeding rate? Well, in general, it is caused if we have too few breeding animals uh, being used in producing of the next generation. So is this also uh, the case in, in the Frisian population? Do we indeed have too few uh, stallions and mares uh, used? Well, basically not. The, uh, on a yearly basis, we, uh, <coughs> we use 90 breeding stallions and 4,000 mares, roughly. And uh, if we calculate the inbreeding rate based on these uh, figures, then it will be less than 0.1%, so far below the uh, the danger zone, so to say. But then we have the assumption that all of these breeding animals are indeed used at an equally uh, level to produce the next generation. And is that the case? No, it's not. Uh, we have a few stallions that produce 
uh, the major part of the uh, foals born in these uh, years. So, and that is the main cause of the inbreeding rate that we see in the, in the population. And you see it illustrated here uh, during the history of the uh, Frisian population. And if we focus on the last couple of years, um, <clears throat> so each of the different colors that is stacked on, on top of each represent the uh, number of progeny produced per uh, stallion of the top 10 stallions. And if they all had uh, been producing an equal number of, uh, of foals, then it would be according this thin yellow line that is uh, across these uh, figures. And 10 stallions would produce together then 11% of all the progeny born in a specific year. And you see that they produce much more, 30%. So that is indeed showing that there is an unequal uh, contribution of the stallions to production of the uh, uh, falls in the next uh, year, and that is causing the high inbreeding rate. So if we want to restrict it, and if we want to restrict the inbreeding rate, what should we do then? What are the options for that? Well, the key is um, that we need to restrict this too high contribution of the popular stallions. And what are the options for that? We could, for instance, we could uh, select more uh, breeding stallions. Uh, on top of the 90 breeding stallions that we have now. But you may wonder if these additional chosen uh, sires will indeed compete with these top stallions. So will uh, stallion number 91, will that com be competitive to stallion number one, etc. Um, another thing what you could do is we could restrict the number of sons selected per uh, popular sire. Indeed, the sons of a popular sire has a, a larger probability, a higher probability to be a breeding stallion uh, himself as well. And we could say, okay, uh, to restrict inbreeding rate further and to reduce the contribution of this father to the population, we could say, okay, only one stallion, uh, one son per stallion uh, can be selected. But when will this stallion, this son, be born? The best of them. Is it at the start of the breeding career of its father or in the end? And then we have to wait 15 years to, uh, to see if it's the best uh, stallion. So that has some practical uh, problems in that. Well, what about the successful measure of uh, mating quota? It has been successful. Will it still be as successful as it was in the past? Well, maybe we have to adapt the, the limit, it's currently 180 uh, progeny per year for a young stallion, but that was in the days that we had 6,000 progeny uh, born each year. And now we are at a level of 4,000, so maybe we have to reduce this mating quota. Um, what about the other successful measure, the mean kinship? Um, is it uh, what, what's often uh, heard in, in practices that there is too little difference between the, the stallions in their uh, kinship uh, uh, coefficient. Well, you should realize even a difference of a half percent will have consequences for the inbreeding rate, where we also said that a half percent difference in inbreeding rate has indeed consequences. So um, it's maybe not so these differences that you see are still uh, relevant. We haven't used the kinship coefficient as a selection criterion. We are not uh, culling the, those breeding stallions with too high uh, 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 kinship uh, coefficient. So uh, that would be also an option, but of course it has practical consequences if we would do that. And you could also say, well, let's look out in the whole of the population and there might be uh, stallions which haven't been uh, considered yet, but maybe they have a much lower uh, kinship, and for that reason they might be uh, worthwhile to consider them in selecting them, as long as they also will be used after that. But it might be an, uh, an option for that. And instead of looking at these uh, individual options, we could also make a combination. We could say, for instance, that 
the mating quota to a stallion is dependent on its kinship. So high, uh, stallions with a high kinship will have a uh, lower mating quota than stallions with a low kinship. So that is a common, an example of a combination of these uh, things. So summarized, we can say that uh, we've been able to successfully reduce the inbreeding rate uh, during the last uh, 20 years by applying the measures of uh, kinship uh, coefficient and mating quota. The slight increase to 0.7% what we see nowadays could be an, uh, a reason for saying, okay, let's consider these uh, limits that we have set on them uh, again, and maybe we have to uh, put sharper reductions, uh, restrictions on them. Um, I think the managing of the inbreeding rate is possible in, in the population as it is now. Another thing we have to uh, pay attention to, that is the issue of genetic disorders. If we are able to reduce the inbreeding rate to this one of a half percent, that will not help us with the current problems we have with the genetic disorders, because these are the consequences of too high inbreeding in the past. So if we want to remove them or reduce them, then we have to uh, have an active selection against these using, for instance, DNA tests. I haven't said so much about crossbreeding yet, uh, and that's also because I consider it as, as a plan B. I think we can uh, solve most of, of these problems within the, the stud book as it is now. Um, and if that's not possible and we need to uh, go over to plan B, then that still requires a central breeding policy to make uh, such a crossing uh, a, a successful way of uh, getting a healthy population of the Frisian horses. And with that, I'd like to thank you for your attention.